We had enough messages from you guys asking us about what we do and how we're set up. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how we're different than most agencies you've dealt with. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends that won't be ya. Been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out. Okay, I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So and so is popping, man. I skip him like he leg day. Most marketing agencies are set up in one of three fashions. Traditional style is gonna be singular office or maybe multiple office locations. Everybody's in those locations from all the way from management, down to specialists, down to content writers, graphics designers, web development, everything's done in-house. That's more of the traditional way that's been going on for let's say the past 30, 40, 50 years. The way that people are moving to is kind of the exact opposite of that, which is 100% remote. So with a remote type of setup, you get the flexibility of finding talent in different cities and allowing people to have, the employees to have the flexibility of working from home, working from a coffee shop, doing it on their time, except for let's say a core hours of 10 to three or something like that. So the remote way works for some different types of agencies and some business models. What we've done here at Fivefold is we've kind of got a split of a 50-50, traditional versus remote. So while we have three locations in Austin, Chicago, New York, we've got people some of our team is in-house every day. Some of our team is remote 100%. And then as we scale, we, f we figure out, do we need to bring somebody in 100% in-house or can that person be remote? So that's, it's a little bit different than what a lot of agencies that we go up against are set up as. So when we're dealing with prospects and trying to close people into clients, they're comparing us to sometimes either a small agency of a couple people sometimes a large agency of 60 to 80 or 100 where they're all in-house with multiple locations. Not very often are we dealt with people that are 100% remote. So it's a little bit different here. Um, we rely heavily on technology when it comes to managing our team. So we have systems put in place. Our project management system is Teamwork Projects. It's kind of like Asana or Basecamp or systems like that. Basically everything revolves around that. When we get a new client, they come into our system. We set them up with a, with a username we try not to email. The reason why is because we want to have one central location for all members of our team that are working on things and the client together to have a singular login into our system to where they can access everything, whether it's files, whether it's messages, whether it's chatting, whether it's content, approvals, all that stuff is set into teamwork projects. It's a super dope system. Um, we've been using it for now about two and a half years. All of our processes, approvals, procedures, backups, everything goes on in this system. That's how we communicate with our teams at different locations and whether or not they're in-house or they are remote, working remotely throughout the country. The reason why we chose to go down that path is that you can't just have emails going back and forth. Everything needs to be organized with task lists and approvals and teamwork allowed us to have that central location and also bring clients in. So when the client comes in, they're able to see everything in one spot and it makes it much more efficient from their standpoint when they're trying to share things with other teams or instead of forwarding emails and forgetting to CC people, they just go in, everything's there, everything's categorized with files, approvals, what they need to do, and it's super easy for them to work through the system. So comparing us to other agencies, a lot of agencies are dealing with typically in two different categories, either they're B2B or B2C or they're a com combination of both. You've got some agencies that do niches out there where they're working on a specific industry or they're doing a specific vertical. So either they work with only one type of client, you know, B2C with consumer goods or B2C with electronics or something like that. And then you've got people that will say, I only do social, I only do PPC, I only do uh, web development. The way that we're set up to differ from that is that we combine those together to where we're doing essentially a couple different industries but we kind of categorize it just like our hashtag up on the wall, it says for companies that hashtag make cool shit or hashtag do cool shit. So it's a way for us to generalize that we work with people that physically make things, the manufacturing industrial environment, that's my background, that's what some of our employees' backgrounds are, and we focus on that because we understand exactly the hurdles that they deal with, whether they're going after the OEMs, manufacturing companies that 
actually make the product or sell the product and they're making it for them, or they're doing it from a standpoint of going after other subcontract manufacturers. The industrial manufacturing sector is a significant chunk of our business because that's what we know the most. The flip side of that is that we deal with consumer brands that we feel have products or have services that really hit home that we feel like we're excited about. We do not work with real estate companies, dentists, lawyers, retail, any sort of small businesses or mom and pop type shops or people that have a service to people or in healthcare or things like that. We don't get involved in that just because that doesn't excite us. And at the end of the day, we want to be excited about the clients that we're bringing in and be passionate about what it is that they do. So we're somewhat selective about markets that we go into, which from a scaling standpoint and growth, that does provide some sort of hindrance to going you know, really big, really quick, but it also allows you to have controlled growth to where we're strategically going after certain industries or sectors and saying, we wanna deal with a mountain biking company. Let's go figure out who is the best mountain biking company out there. Let's pitch to them, market to them, do some branding to them and figure out who, who out there is available for us to pick up as a client. If we're going into consumer goods, we find products or, or things that are out there, wearable technology or things that are exciting, new, that aren't just the regular type of consumer goods. And then we figure out that strategically who we want to go after. So there's a lot of times that people come to us and say, will you do our marketing? Can we get some pricing? And we, we say it's just not a fit for us because we're not going to compete with companies that just work with everybody. Our niche is very controlled and strategic to the vision that I have for the agency. So we want to stick with that. If we just go out and do a shotgun and say, we'll do anything with anybody, then that's going to basically put us into a me too type agency where we're not providing really any sort of difference from the other agencies that already do it. So with us being strategic from a size of company standpoint, we typically do not get involved with, with a lot of startups unless they're heavily funded. And we feel like there is an opportunity for that product or service or whatever it is that they're doing to really scale. We don't just do anything for any size company, even if they're in one of our verticals from an industry or a product standpoint that we want to deal with. We're selective to where we have certain thresholds that, that they have to meet from current revenue standpoint and current budget for marketing before we consider bringing them on. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of agencies that say, like, in, like I've said in some of our other videos, you can sp like spend a thousand dollars on your marketing and we can do this, this and that for you. We don't get into that battle with other agencies because it's just not going to do enough for the, the types of clients that we want to deal with, want to scale at a more significant level than just a 2% growth. Unless that 2% growth is a significant amount of money for their business because they're already massive, then maybe that would be okay. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, like right now, our smallest client is around five, six million in revenue. Uh, our largest client right now is around just over a billion in revenue. So we have a wide range, but we have minimum thresholds. To, to start doing business with us, it's gonna be a few thousand dollars minimum a month just to get us to start doing things because we have to do, at a minimum, a three-prong approach. So that three-prong approach is gonna be, we won't come in and just do your PPC or just manage your email or just do your videos or just do your web unless we feel like there's an opportunity down the road to do more with you because we want to provide the most impact and really be integrated in from a partnership level. So at a minimum, we typically look at SEO, content marketing, and social media management because now we've got, we're managing the long-term play with the SEO and managing a website. We're creating content, whether it's written articles or video production, and then we have a distribution source with social. At a minimum level, that's what we always go to because those three things have to be in our control for us to then be ranked and valued from a client standpoint for them to say, are you guys moving the needle? Well, if we're just managing your social, but your content isn't that great, then we don't have control over whether or not that's gonna produce the results you want. There's agencies that will do that, and if you have enough good content, they can look at it, but we want to be in more control to look at the entire picture of the strategy, the creative, the distribution, that's the best way to get the results. Now from there, we get into um, pay-per-click advertising, whether it's YouTube, pre-roll, whether it's Google AdWords, social media advertising, video production, um, doing things like email marketing, CRM management. We can go to the wide range of being the partner agency that does everything for your one or two person uh, marketing department, 
or if you have nobody in your marketing and we're dealing directly with a COO or a VP of sales, that's fine. Or we can just do an aspect of it. Some of our clients have teams of six to 10 people and we are just handling a smaller portion of it to offshoot some of that heavy lifting from them. We're set up to be nimble in that aspect, but at a minimum level, we have to at least do a few of those different creative points, a few of the distribution sources, and going you know all the way up into if you have brand collateral that you want, pitch decks, graphics design types of things, brochures, line cards, sell sheets. We do those on a project basis. Um, some of our clients have, have us on retainer to where we're doing it every single month because that's how often they're rolling out new products or making changes. But for the most part, those are one-off things. From a web development standpoint, SEO, we want to build a website, but then we also want to manage the website, and then we also want to increase traffic to the website. If we build you a website and it's beautiful and looks great, but then you guys fail as a client to push that new content out there or to drive traffic through your own channels, then that's gonna reflect badly on us because we wanna make sure that the new site gets as many eyes as possible on it. So we try and look at it from that standpoint of doing more than just a singular aspect, but we do take on projects where if we feel like there's a long-term potential from a true partnership, we will go into it and say, we'll do that singular project, let's talk about the distribution or driving traffic to that or getting eyes on that once that's completed so that way we can get the most bang for the buck. So hopefully that gave you some insight into how we do things. Maybe that sparked some interest for you guys to reconsider your agency and look at other agencies. When Before you pick your agency, make sure you ask them those questions of how they're set up, how their team is, how are they going to communicate, what other things can they do. You don't want to have five agencies where everybody's got their niche of the vertical of what they do because you need one overarching agency that's managing the overall strategy. So. Get multiple, op get multiple quotes from multiple agencies and really look and expand outside your geographic location of having somebody be local and look at potential remote agencies. Maybe they're across the country, maybe they're in a different state, but really ask them a lot of questions about, dig through how are they set up, who are they working with, what types of passions do they have, why do they do the things that they do, and maybe you can have a better experience with them. So if you guys got some value out of this, hit that like button. If you got questions, leave a comment. We'll see you on the next one.